Hello everyone at Life Church. Thank you so much for asking Andy and I to be part of your I Believe series. Such a privilege to be able to share. And we've been asked to share uh, on the subject, I Believe in Mission. And that's a great subject uh, to have been chosen for us to share about because I'm actually passionate about mission. So I'm going to be sharing some of my thoughts and then Andy's going to take part two. So uh, mission is something that I do every day. It's uh, something I'm passionate about. And uh, when I was a little girl, I wanted to be a missionary. It was either that or a trapeze artist. And as I'm not flexible, that was never going to happen. But I remember telling my mum after hearing missionaries come to the church and speak that I wanted to be a missionary. But what is mission? We all know that commandment in the Bible, uh, in Mark 16 and verse 15, where it says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And primarily it rests also on that well-known verse in John, John 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's about love. God loves the world. He wants us to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus, so that people can have everlasting life. And that is the fundamental of mission, sharing God's love. And that's what it comes down to for me. It's not because it's a commandment, because we can do commandments out of duty and not love sometimes, but it's because there's a hurting, broken world that needs to experience love and hope. And many times in the gospel, we read that Jesus was moved with compassion. So I'm going to share a few Bible verses with you uh, to um, just talk about how many times Jesus was moved with compassion. So Matthew 14, 14 to 21. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. Mark chapter 1, verse 41. Then Jesus, moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. And that was to somebody who had leprosy. In Mark chapter 16, verse 34, it says, And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them, because they were sheep, like sheep, not having a shepherd. Luke 7, verse 13. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. Matthew 15, verse 32. Now Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. And Matthew 20, verse 34. So Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. These examples show that Jesus had compassion in many different circumstances. Those who were sick, the lepers, the outcasts of society, those who needed guidance and care, the bereaved and the hungry and the blind. And these people had so many struggles. The widow who had just lost her son had already lost her husband and she would struggle to provide for herself without those men in her life. The leper would have been an outcast and the blind would not be able to work and probably were left to beg on the streets. They were the impoverished of society and Jesus was moved with compassion when he saw them all. In 1 John 4 verse 18 it says, perfect love casts out all fear. When you're unable to work or you're sick or you're an outcast of society, therein dwells fear. Fear of hunger, fear of pain, a fear of the future. And God's perfect love is the antidote to fear, and we're called to love one another. The very verse that challenges me, though, is 1 John 3, verse 17. And it says this, If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need, but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? The reason I believe in mission is because of love and compassion. And the organisation that Andy and I run works with women and girls who live in extreme poverty. And when I visit India and Ethiopia and Uganda and Mozambique, I'm actually overwhelmed with compassion. When you realise that these women are abused, abandoned, they work six days a week just to earn five pounds and they struggle to eat and struggle to care for their children, how can you not be moved with compassion? When you hear their stories and you see the squalor in which they live, you cannot help to be moved by those stories. Now I've had women sobbing at my feet. I've had young girls telling me 
how they became orphans as tears have poured down their faces. I've met women who have lost all of their six children due to malaria. And I'm compelled to make a difference. And that is why I believe in sharing the good news of the gospel, that there is a God in heaven who loves them so much that he sent his son that they might have eternal life. But to me, mission is even more than that. Jesus wants us to have an abundant life here on earth as well. In John 10, 10 verse 10, it says, I have come that you might have life in all its fullness. I want to help these women and girls to have a better life here on earth. Just like Jesus, who every time he was moved with compassion, he changed their story. I believe that we should look to make a difference in the lives of those who are struggling, the lost, the bereaved, the sick and the hungry. In Proverbs 31, verse eight and nine, it says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly, defend the rights of the poor and needy. Destitute means without the basic necessities of life, to be impoverished, lacking, exhausted and depleted. To me though, the basic necessities of life are not just water, food and shelter, they're actually what we need to survive, but to me, we need love and care to thrive. What would life be without those things? So when you're moved with compassion, just like Jesus, you are compelled to, to make a change. We call our organisation World of Worth, or WOW, because we want to create a world in which people know that they have value and worth, that they are precious and loved by God and by us. We don't just want to educate or clothe or feed, we want women and girls to thrive emotionally, physically and spiritually, and to know abundant life here on earth. We want to introduce them to Jesus so they have eternal hope. God calls us to lead full lives, lives live, lived abundantly, that are thriving and flourishing, lives characterised by God's joy and love, that perfect love that casts out all fear. And that is why I believe passionately in mission, not just because it's something that Jesus commands us to do, but because Jesus was moved with compassion. And as we too see a struggling world, we too should be moved with compassion to help out and reach out and to help others. So thank you for allowing me to share and I'll hand you over to Andy. Hey everyone at Life Church, great to be with you. Thank you for this opportunity just to be able to share about mission, about why we believe in mission. Actually, I believe in mission because it's a biblical principle. You've heard that from Rachel. Uh, it's the Great Commission, not the Great Omission. Every single one of us has an opportunity on a daily basis to live a missional life. It might be at school. It might be in work. It might be at the local shop. But you have an opportunity to share your story about how your life has been changed and actually how you do life on a daily basis can make and encourage and support so many people that, if you like, are in a, a world that over the last 18 months has been completely turned upside down for so many people. But actually, when I talk about mission, I think about why I believe in mission. I believe in mission because actually that's something that I was brought up in. Um, my parents were the founders of what is now World of Worth. It's the very core and the very heart of how they did life. I remember as, as a child going round with mum and dad as they would itinerate around local churches and dad would, would preach from that very verse that Rachel uh, shared with you, John 3.16. And that was the foundation stone of many of his messages. But actually his heart and his passion to see lives transformed, to see uh, communities and countries and regions changed and introduced to Jesus was incredible. We were always that family that would have the missionaries to stay. And it was me who had to give up my bed. So I can honestly say I probably wasn't best pleased all the time. Um, I would end up sleeping on the sofa or if I was lucky, or even at the end of mum and dad's bed on one of those lovely air beds. Um, but actually what an incredible privilege that I look back on now to have those incredible missionaries come stay, share their stories. I think some of the times I would be sent to bed and I'd sit at the top of the stairs in our open plan house and I would just listen to some of these stories of these, these missionaries who would share how they were doing life, how they were smuggling Bibles, 
had made a difference, the difference they were making, how some of them have been shot at, and the stories were have, have made a lasting impression to me. And now I find myself, quite a number of years later, actually, as the director of WOW, uh, doing exactly the same thing and inspiring and helping communities and transforming communities and alleviating poverty wherever we can. You know, as I look back, there's there's three key uh, cores, if you like, that um, I look back on from mum and dad that I think we've carried forward to, I know we've carried forward to, uh, that are within WOW, and that's relationship, accountability, and transparency. When we talk about relationship, who we do life with is so important. Hannah has a phrase, Hannah's our, our daughter, she has the phrase that, um, am I swimming with sharks or am I swimming with dolphins? And actually, that's a really good analogy. Who are we putting ourselves around? Are they uplifting? Are they encouraging are they supporting or are they biting away nipping away and and discouraging and not putting us in a great environment actually it's good to do life and relationship because actually it's safer it's great to have people around us that will stretch us that will make us think differently that will challenge us um, and cause us to think bigger and actually it's great to have people around us and do life in relationship because actually it's supportive. There's an African proverb that says, when you run alone, you run fast. When you run together, you run far. Life isn't a 50 yard dash, it's a marathon. Just last week, we, we, uh, we were at the funeral of my 97 year old granddad who, who lived an incredible life who was a pastor, a leader of churches, who, who served God with all of his heart for so many years. And just on one of our last visits when we were up there, he, he wasn't particularly well and we spent time with him. And actually the phrase that he used was, I live so that I can give. At the age of 97, he still had the missional mentality where he would give, not just of his finance, but actually would give of his time where he would pray, where he would support, where we would write letters and encourage people. It's good to do life in relationship because it's smarter. We learn more by doing life with people around us. Proverbs 28, 26 says, whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool. So in other words, if you're the only one that's thinking it, What's to say that it's right anyway? We talk about life and we talk about how we do our relationships. And at the core of our relationship is our relationship with our Heavenly Father. It's so important that we spend time. It's so important that we listen and we resource ourselves to what God is trying to tell us. And actually for us doing well, our relationship with our project leaders is at the very core of, of where we're at. We have some incredible project leaders that started as project leaders, but actually have become friends. We've laughed together, we've cried together, we've done so many different things together, and we've had some incredible meals together. Um, but actually, we're there to support them. We're there to encourage them. We're there to, to really inspire them to think differently, to do differently, that actually, we can transform communities. We can transform lives. Just because we're Christians doesn't mean that life is going to be that infamous bed of roses. Actually, difficulties do come along. And actually, it's when those difficulties do happen that actually it's really important we have relationship with good people around us that will support us, that will encourage us, that will bring us through those difficult times. We've talked about the relationship and then we talk about accountability, accountability in our time, accountability in our finance. Proverbs 20 verse 6 says, many claim to be loyal, but it is hard to find a trust, a trustworthy person. How do we prove ourselves to be trustworthy? 
when I look at that and I look at the responsibilities and the relationship we have with our project leaders, actually, they've built trustworthy and they've become trustworthy and accountable because actually they've been a consistent with what they do, what they say and how they respond to different circumstances and situations. God sees absolutely everything we do and he sees that we're faithful and he sees that as we're faithful with the small things, he will give us the larger things uh, to, to be faithful with. And actually that comes down with our finance as well about how when we give, we give it with no agenda. We give it with um, no clauses, no nothing. And actually we've been so blessed to be able to be a blessing to so many others around us. We earn trust by being close and opening up with people, by communicating with them. Communication is such a key part of, of building accountability with, with our project leaders. We communicate with them. We're so fortunate that Zoom has become the normal, WhatsApp messages, video calls, and everything else like that. And actually, that's helped to build our relationship with them. And actually, that's a key part of building our relationship to build the accountability with our Heavenly Father. We need to spend time with him. We need to resource ourselves. We need to spend time reading the word. We need to spend time praying. Actually, we need to be consistent in that on a, on a regular basis. So we've heard, actually, we need to build relationship. We've heard that, actually, we need to be accountable. And actually, we need to be transparent, which is the final point you'll be pleased to hear. When we talk about transparency, I love the, the phrase that uh, what you see is what you get. You know, I've got one friend in particular that I can tell within seconds of seeing him how he is, how he's feeling, whether he's happy, whether he's sad, whether he's grumpy, what, and how you, you read that. Um, but actually, he's transparent in, in his life. Um, and actually, we need to be transparent in our lives, transparent with, with those around us. We can't have hidden agendas. We need to be open and communicate. Um, there's, there's times where it is hard. And when it comes to talk about finance, actually, for us as an organization, we want to be transparent with you as our donors, with, with our projects. And I've loved over the last... 18 months doing our coffee and chats and we talk about transparency we talk about the wow coffee and chats that we've been able to do and we've encouraged our we've brought our project leaders on uh, from India from Uganda from Ethiopia from Philippines and what we've said is just share what's going on with the project and actually at the end of what they've shared we've we've opened it up for 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 the donors to ask questions and what an incredible opportunity to ask firsthand from some of our project leaders what's going on, the impact it's having, and actually to relate one-on-one. -on -one. And actually when we talk about transparency, that's a great thing. And we're, we're, we're so blessed to have the project leaders that we have. But when we talk about that, it, it always reminds me of 1 Timothy 6, 18 and 19. And we talk about finance, about how we want to make a difference and how blessed we are to make a difference. And 1 Timothy 6, 18 and 19 says, tell them to do good. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous in, to those in need, always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasures as a good foundation for the future that they may experience a true life. When we talk about giving, we have to give with the right attitude. We have to give with the right heart. In answer to your questions, um, I believe in mission because actually it was part of my childhood. It was demonstrated to me and actually it was an incredible foundation that was put in my life by my parents that actually we have the opportunity as parents, as grandparents, as aunties, as uncles, whoever it may be to actually make a difference to those around us. When you look around your mission field, as I said at the very beginning, is where you do life. You have the opportunity to share your story. 
but actually I'd encourage you to build relationships, to build accountability and to be transparent. When we talk about all of those things, it's a great foundation that WOW is built on, that we've grown on, that we've changed and we've developed. So thank you for this opportunity just to share with you for a few minutes. We look forward to seeing you again soon in real life and God bless you all.